hey guys and welcome back to my channel my name is benedict if you are new here um, and in today's video we're going to be talking all things community service um, so yeah if you didn't know i just recently graduated as a physiotherapist and i am currently doing my um, community service year so if you're interested to hear more about that please make sure you continue watching and if you're not subscribed yet please do hit that subscribe button and without further ado let's get right into it I'll basically be speaking about community service from the from the perspective of a physiotherapist. However, if you are in um, occupational therapy, speech, um, audiology, or radiography, the process to apply for community service is just it's very similar. It's kind of like the same thing. Uh, but obviously, because I know more about it from the physiotherapist perspective, that's what I'll be speaking about. So obviously, starting to become a physiotherapist, I studied for four years, and then the year after you graduate is the year that you do your community service. So community service, like I mentioned before, you do it for one year and it's basically a year for you to work for the government and to work for the community. Um, so in terms of the application process, towards, I think it's mid-year or towards the, like, the end of the year, um, the Department of Health basically sends you an email um, giving you a link for you to register all your details on their website. So that's the website where you apply um, to work as a community service um, worker. So after you register um, all, your, all your details, um, shortly after that, they send you um, information regarding actually applying um, to work as a community service worker. So you apply um, on that website. You're basically given five options as to where you can work. Um, they give you like a whole lot of rules that you'll see when you're applying there about where you can um, where you can apply to, how to apply, and all that kind of stuff. But basically, you're given five options. Um, and out of those five options, you have to choose at least, I think it's three different provinces out of South Africa. So bear in mind that all people who are trying to work in, trying to do the community service here are applying from all parts of South Africa. So everyone is applying there and um, you apply um, at different hospitals, different clinics all over South Africa. So like I said, five options and it needs to be at least three different provinces. And then based on the provinces that you've chosen, you also have to choose um, based on priority levels, so there's I think priority one, priority two, and priority three. Um, if I'm not mistaken, priority one is more like your smaller clinics, so like your health centers, the smaller hospitals, or like the smaller kind of things. And then your priority three is more like the bigger um, tertiary institutions, the academic hospitals, the those type of places. So when you're applying, you have to apply over a range of different places. You apply to tertiary, you can apply to um, the smaller clinics, the health centers. So they try to just make sure that when you're applying, you're applying to like um, a wide variety of different areas and you're not just sticking to, for example, tertiary hospitals because there's many people who want to work up in the tertiary hospitals because obviously there's more opportunities and um, there's more areas for you to work in because it's a bigger place and when you see a lot of different conditions, you will learn a lot more as opposed to working in a clinic. And working in a clinic, obviously, it's a smaller, it's a smaller, it's a smaller place. You don't really see as many people. Um, so that's why I noticed that not a lot of people wanted to work in the clinics. But then whether or not you want to work there, you still have to apply over different areas and, and over multiple priority levels. And so because you have, you're given five different options, um, you, are, you are able to rank them according to what your preferences are. So if you feel like you really want to go to a specific um, hospital or specific placement, then you're able to let them know and put that as your first option to show that this is the first choice, this is where I really want to go to. And then from there, obviously from number one up to number five, five being um, your least favorite option, um, you can kind of tell them you know where you want, really want to go to um, based on the order in which you rank your placements. So with me, I was blessed enough to be able to be given my first option, which is the hospital that I'm working in right now. Um, there was only one post available and um, yeah, I was the one picked for physio, which is great. Um, so you will see that when you're applying, um, this, they will show you on the application website the number of posts and placements that are open for you or that are open to tell you how many people they're accepting for that position. So you're able to see that and you're also able to see how many other people are applying for that post. So obviously if you're applying, you see that a lot of people have already applied to that placement, that's obviously going to decrease your chances of you going there. So it would be it would really be um, good a good thing for you to rather apply to places where not many people are applying to um, as opposed to just applying to the same place where everyone is going to because your chances of going there are going to be a lot less. Um, the other advice that I would give to you if you are applying to work um, in your community service here 
is that try to speak to a lot of people try to speak to people who just finished their community service try to speak to other physios or like if you're physio or if you're in another uh, profession try to speak to other people in your profession ask them where they're applied to ask them how it was there you know just because you have an idea as to um, which places are going to be better than the other places so um, you're also able to get more information for yourself and it will be good for you so speak to lots of people ask lots of questions and do lots of research about the places that you're going to put down um, see like um, how far it is from where you where you're going to be staying if you're going to be staying at home see how far it is from your home um, see what's available around you see if there's lots of shops around you um, see like what's like what the safety of that area is like um, so do lots of research and then pick out the best option based on all of those things based on safety levels based on availability of um, things that are going to be around you based on the number of posts that are available based on how many people apply there so you need to take all those factors into consideration when you when you are choosing your your placement another thing i would also say that you need to take into consideration is check if there's accommodation um, hospital accommodation available at that placement so having hospital accommodation is a plus 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 um, especially if it's good accommodation because most of the times they're very cheap they're like way cheaper than you staying at outside accommodation um, and if there's hospital accommodation you're already saving money again on fuel or on transportation costs because you are staying at the hospital so you just walk to and from your um, your flat or your accommodation so you're saving money because the accommodation is cheap number one and secondly you're saving money on trans transportation costs if you had to travel to and from home okay so then once you've finished applying and you've put down all of your places that you um you've decided you wanted to go to um the department will then send you um the placement that they've placed you at so bear in mind that the places that you've placed down those are for them to consider it's not a thing of like you are going to go where you want to go to um, if you're lucky enough, they'll place you where you want to go to, but obviously not everyone can get their first option. There are many people who get placed at places they don't want to go to. Um, so yeah, they say they, they communicate with you where you've been placed. So based on whether you want to go there, you don't want to go there, you can accept the position. And if you feel like you don't want to go to that place, then you can, there's also the option of you um, swapping with another student. So you can um, speak with somebody else. They usually form these WhatsApp groups and Facebook groups where you can communicate with other students who are applying and you can find out where someone else is going and if you want to go there and they want to go to where you're going then you guys can just swap and then put all that information on the website to let them know that you're going to swap with this person and then yeah you can just swap your placements and go to somewhere else that you'd rather go to so there's always that benefit of them allowing you to do swaps and not forcing you to you know go to only one placement so from then on once you've accepted and gotten your acceptance um is it acceptance letter or some other letter that tells you that you know You've, they've confirmed that you are now going to be working at the hospital. The hospital will then communicate with you, give you your contract, which you need to sign. And obviously the contracts will be written, um, you know, what, what um, the position is about. It will be written um, how much you're going to be earning. Um, and then you just need to sign that and send it back. Um, and like it's different for all different hospitals. Like as as students, I've heard that many people got all their information at different times. Like I got mine a lot sooner than a lot of other people. Some people, they moved to their placement even before they got a contract. Some people, they got changed a few days before they had to move. So there's a lot of stuff that goes around this um, application and placement thing. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, and luckily for me, it was a very simple and straightforward procedure. But again, not everyone's process is going to be that simple. So just bear in mind. and. And also, if you feel like you know you're not getting any communication, you need to reach out and call, call whoever needs to be called, and find out what's happening with your application, and find out what you need to do um, in order to ensure that you do have a placement by the time you need to start working the next year. So don't be afraid to really ask questions, ask other people, you know, call whoever needs to be called, and yeah. So yeah, guys, that's basically all the information that I have to share with you guys about um, applying to be a community service worker. Um, if I've missed anything and anyone feels that they can add something, please do leave it in the comment section. If you guys have any questions, also please do leave it in the comment section. I'll make sure to answer um, down there. And um, yeah, so I've basically been working here for, it's been two weeks now. So far, I really love the experience. Um, it's a great hospital. Um, I've had really friendly um, colleagues, the staff members of the hospital are really friendly. I am staying in hospital accommodation, which is bit, it's, it's really nice accommodation. I mean, for the price that I'm paying, 
really nice accommodation and yeah i'm really enjoying the process so far and basically no complaints hey honestly no complaints i will be sure to share the journey with you guys on my channel and i hope that you guys really enjoy the content um, that i'll be posting if there's any um suggestions or things that you guys would like to see on my channel because i do know that sometimes i run out of options and ideas so if there's anything um, specific that you want me to maybe make a video about or to share with you guys please um do write it down in the comment section and yeah if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up please subscribe i mean if you've gotten this far in the video you might as well just subscribe and share the video with any other people who will also be doing their community service years and if you feel like this information would help them and i'll see you guys on my next video bye